This is attorney Gordon Johnson of the Brain Injury Law Group. I'm the author of Carbon Monoxide Poisoning.com. In my last video, I talked about the acute symptoms of carbon monoxide, meaning what the symptoms are during the period of time that you're actually getting poisoned. Um, it's important that you understand those symptoms and it's important that you go to the hospital and get tested. It's important that when you get there, you insist on the proper tests and not just let the emergency room person personnel say that you have the flu. In this video I want to talk about what are the long-term consequences of getting carbon monoxide poisoning. More than half the people who get carbon monoxide poisoning are probably going to be alright. The chances that you are alright is going to go up if you get hyperbaric oxygen tr treatment. If you have a severe case of poisoning they may very well get you hyperbaric oxygen treatment, but those people who are sick, those people who have levels above 10 percent, but not 35 percent, often don't get it. You should ask for it. But when you get home, when you get home from the hospital and you're sure that your premises are now safe, that whatever caused the carbon monoxide has been fixed, that you have proper alarms, about half the people are going to continue to have problems. Sometimes those problems go away. You feel better for a day, a week, even a month or two, and then they come back. The symptoms when they came back to some degree will be similar to what you were having when you got poisoned initially, but they also tend to deal with things that are the result of brain damage. About 40 percent of those people with significant poisoning ultimately have a diagnosis of permanent brain damage. Brain damage affects you in much the same ways that you might have from severe concussions. But in carbon monoxide poisoning, those issues tend to cluster into more complicated ways than a traditional concussion. The symptoms we see of carbon monoxide poisoning, while they are similar to what we would see from any brain damage, are focused in primarily four areas. The first area is a change in cognition, the way you think, the way your mind works, the way you process information, the way you remember. Um, your just overall intellectual ability. The second is a change in your behavior. While there are overlaps with changes in behavior and changes in cognition, it's primarily how you interact with other people, um, the degree to which you have inappropriate behaviors, you have difficulty controlling your uh, your behavior, you in many ways seem to have lost years of maturity. The third way that carbon monoxide poisoning affects people long term is the changes in mood. So, And there is a crossover between behavior problems which can very well lead into anger and changes in mood. But mood issues are more than just anger, they're primarily depression, they're dramatic increases in anxiety people with anxiety disorders almost becoming panic disorders. Um, very, very significant. The psychiatric ramifications of getting carbon monoxide poisoning are quite significant. The fourth area, and the, interestingly one of the easiest areas to identify after someone's been carbon monoxide poisoned, is changes in the way the brain and the neurological system operate the body. For example, those people with carbon monoxide poisoning and those with long-term problems from carbon monoxide poisoning very often, more than 50 percent of the time, will have problems in the way in the, which their eyes focus. The vision itself may not be changed, but your ability to use your eyes um, is changed. Um, you'll have more difficulty seeing things near or far. You'll have problems with the way your eyes um, converge and when, with moving objects. You'll have difficulty also partially related to eye movements with, with balance, vertigo, those types of issues. Um, carbon monoxide poisoning can impact your heart, it can impact any organ. We're seeing a surprising number of cases where people have ongoing issues with irritable bowel syndrome. Um, all of those things are physical changes that happen to the body. Some of them are related to the brain or something to more of the peripheral nervous system or just other organs that are damaged. It's important that if you've survived carbon monoxide poisoning that, that you don't just assume that you're all better. The discharge home because your carbon monoxide levels in your blood have gone down is not 
a clean bill of health. If you've had carbon monoxide poisoning, you should go to the hospital immediately. You should come home and the next day you should go back either to the hospital, to the clinic, or to your family doctor. But if you're having problems after a poisoning, don't wait for a two-week appointment with your family doctor. Go to a walk-in clinic, go back to the emergency room, make sure that everyone knows. Long term, there is hope, there are things that can be done, but it's very important that you start with the proper diagnosis. The diagnosis of carbon monoxide poisoning begins with the blood test the day of, but that isn't the definitive answer. It's whether or not you have been changed by this poisoning event. Thank you.